YouTube. It's Jen from Jen Stitching Niche. I'm back for another video. It's been about a month and I need to get this video made. I recorded it and um, deleted the whole thing because I did a horrible job. There was crying. There was confusion. So it's better just to start over. So hi. It's good to see everybody. It's been a while, but it's been a phenomenal month of October. I had so many fun things going on in October. Um, it was just, I went on two trips. I've been to a craft show. I've taken a quilt class. And that's all since the last time we visited with each other. So I've had a very good month. I um, have quite a bit to share with you. I've got some life updates, some chicken updates. Um, I want to share my trip to Boston and my trip to Minnesota. Um, I've got some stitching to share as well. I've had a few finishes since the last time we visited, and I've had quite a few purchases. I um, also want to share some plans that I have for the rest of this year and for next year. And then I'm also going to do a little bit more extensive um, shop update, which I don't, don't normally do, but I've had some encouragement from several of my viewers that I should do that. And so I'm going to, and I'm going to try to um, feature some of the new things in my shop. Um, on my future videos as well. So um, first things first, life update. So since the last time we visited, I went to Boston with my husband. Um, our fall break was originally the same weekend um, at my school. Our fall break was originally the same weekend as the Minnesota retreat, which was like, great, that's wonderful. I will be going to the Minnesota retreat. Um, but then they changed it. They moved our fall break to the weekend or the week before. Um, which was great because that meant I could go on another trip because I've already paid for the trip to Minnesota. So my husband decided we needed to go on a trip that he's going to plan because I would have planned us our trip to Disney World. And I love Disney. He's okay with Disney. He's not as big a fan as I am. So he planned a trip to Boston and he did an amazing job. We had so much fun. Um, we left on a Thursday and got home on Sunday. We actually got home around one o'clock on Sunday with, you know, so we weren't exhausted the next day. Um, we flew out on Thursday and when we got to the hotel, we got an Uber and went to Salem. And, and while we were in Salem, we did a, a nighttime witches trial tour, more of a historical tour. And it was a lot of fun. We had a really nice meal. Salem was beautiful. Um, just a lot of history, a lot of old buildings, and just a very interesting place. I wish we could have spent another day there. Um, the next day, we got up and we went to Boston Common, had some uh, breakfast, and then we went on a craft beer tour, which was fun. It was kind of funny. There were 12 of us. Um, half the tour group was from the South, though. We had a couple from Beaumont, Texas. Um, my husband and myself, and then there were these two friends, two guys, that's why their wives didn't want to go on the beer tour, so it's just the two of them from, um, I want to say Plaquemine, Louisiana, maybe not. I think that's right, though. Near Lafayette. Um, but I think that's where they were from. I guess it doesn't really matter, but, um, and then the other six people were, there was a family of four from New York and then New York City. And then um, a couple from Alberta, Canada. Um, but we had a great time. We spent the whole day together. Um, had lots of great beers and ciders, hard ciders, which was fun. Um, and, you know, it was just really fun. I'll um, insert some pictures of the restaurant that we had lunch. Um, they had 100 beers on tap, which was pretty impressive. Um, and our tour guide was really funny. He was from Arkansas. So then... The next, we went to a really nice restaurant that night, seafood restaurant on the wharf, and had a really good meal. The next day we got up, and it was phenomenal. Oh, no, I forgot. That same night, after the beer tour, that night we went on a haunted um, cemetery tour in Boston. Um, and th that one, the people dressed up. They were so funny. Um, we did have a, an accident. An older lady was walking and tripped on the sidewalk, and she had her hands in her pocket, so she had no way of stopping her fall. It was a really bad fall. We had to, you know, pause the tour. The tour guide was very professional. 
very, um, she handled things very well. The ambulance was called and the lady was taken to the hospital and I hope that she was okay. We, we, the last update we had was that she was conscious and that her family was there with her. So, um, and nothing seemed to be serious, but it was a really bad fall. Um, the tour went on and, you know, the, our tour guide, Lily Winter was her name. She, you could tell that she was not, she could not get that out of her mind. She, she did her best. She did a phenomenal job, but things were just crazy the rest of the night. At one point, these kids came up to our group and gave her a huge balloon bouquet that she had to carry around the rest of the night. She's like, this is the weirdest night I've ever had. But we really enjoyed it. Um, lots of history. We went to several cemeteries. We got to see you know, Ben Franklin's parents' grave. We saw Paul Revere's grave. And I'll insert pictures of that tour as well. Um, our last day was Saturday, and we went on a whale watching tour, which was, I was so happy. When we got out there, I was like, okay, um, you know, I've seen dolphins. If you are, you know, get in the water anywhere, pretty much you will see, you know, ocean water. You'll see dolphins. They like to come up around the boats. And one thing, we did not see any dolphins the whole time we were out there, and I thought that was, that was strange. But when we got out to the area, it's a preserve, we could see the mist from them, the well surfacing. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's, that's cool. I know they're there. But then they started coming closer to the boat. And um, we got to see eight different humpback whales. It was amazing. I'll insert pictures and video of um, what we were able to see. And the first one that I saw like surface and then you could see the tail. I just kept hitting my husband. I was so excited. He's like, are you happy? I'm like, I am so happy. I cried a little bit, but it was just amazing. I was just, it was an amazing event. Um, about a week after that, my husband was showing me pictures that he had found on the internet of other people um, posting the um, videos, but these were professionals. This wasn't a, a whale watching tour, but of whales like coming out of the water all the way. And he's like, what would you do? I said, I think I would faint if, I would, if that would have happened with us. I think I would have, you would have had to take me back inside. I would have just been overwhelmed. But it was a, one of the best trips that I've ever gone on in my life. My husband did a great job. That night we went and ate at a really nice restaurant in, um, in Boston. I can't remember the name of it, but we did the the tasting menu, which I love doing tasting menus at restaurants, and especially if they have a really good wine pairing. Uh, it can be a little bit extravagant, but we don't do it very often, um, and we had a, it was a seven course, and it was really good, really good food. Um, I'm pretty adventurous with food. I'll eat just about anything, and they, they, they were like, it's going to be pretty you know, adventurous. I'm like, I, I'm up for it. So they brought up one point and I'll put a picture in. Maybe I won't because some people not, might not like that, but it's a salmon head that they had roasted. But the meat on the head is, there's quite a bit of meat. So we ate that and um, we had squid, we had octopus, we had um, pork belly, which I'm not a fan of pork belly. We had some really good um, beef what else? It was really good food. And then we had two different desserts. The wine was really, the pairings were really good. Um, really, really, really. Yeah, it was a great time. Um, but my husband deserves a pat on the back. I mean, he did a great job. He was very sweet to plan that. And it's been a pretty rough beginning of the semester. So he wanted to do something to kind of get me kind of decompressed, I guess, because I've been stressed out with this semester. Um, things are better now. I mean, it, it worked. I've been just much calmer since this trip. Our second trip, or my second trip, was the following Thursday, Teresa, Kitten Stitcher, and I left for the Minnesota retreat. So we went to Minnesota, and um, we got there Thursday night, and then Friday we drove into the retreat center. And it was, or drove to the retreat center, and it was phenomenal. When we got there, 
Um, the first people that I talked to were Susie Reno, hey Sue, and um, I talked to Kathleen and Marlene, two of the sweetest people. I just love those two. Um, I wish Nicole would have been there and then it would have been just absolutely perfect, but I understand she couldn't be there. But um, those two ladies, those three ladies, are like my, you know what is it, our tribe. They just mean a really, they are very, very special people. So I enjoyed spending the weekend, spending time with them. Got to meet all kinds of wonderful people. Um, I know everybody says it, but if you get a chance to go to a retreat, whether it's a floss tube retreat or not, go. It's really good to just spend time with people who have a very similar, um, have similar interests. But Kathleen and Marlene are special in that they are just giving, loving, caring people. And within probably, we got there around 2 o'clock that afternoon and by 6 I got some pretty upsetting news. My dad, who had been in the hospital earlier in the semester um, for quite a while, was taken back to the hospital. So I got a message from my sister that said that his blood pressure was low and they couldn't keep his blood pressure up, that they were taking him to the emergency room and then they would just give me updates. And so I was very upset. And so I'm a shy person to begin with. And then when that was kind of um, when I found out that I just was not, it was really hard for me to be excited and involved. And Kathleen and Marlene were very understanding and very supportive and just super sweet. I can't tell you how much they mean to me. But um, his blood pressure, they, they don't know what was going on. And, you know, we, we kind of went through this before. He's 84 years old. He had a stroke two years ago. It'll be two years in February. And so he's just, there's, there's all kinds of reasons why with the different medications that he has and then just his age. So, um, they just wanted to get his blood pressure stabilized. They decided that it was because of his, um, that he was dehydrated. So they made sure that he was, um, hydrated and watched him overnight. And then the next day, I got messages from my sister that he was doing much better and that he would be home on Sunday. And they, they did. He was, um, my older brother actually was driving down to stay with him Sunday. And my sister just sent him a message and said, don't worry about it. Meet us at the house. So he, he was able to go home, but it was really hard to be in a festive mood when I didn't know what was going on with my dad. And I was, um, I literally at the Northern part of the country and my dad was and the rest of my family was down there on the Gulf Coast. So fortunately, things were okay. I didn't have to worry, but you know how that is. Um, I enjoyed the retreat so much. I got to meet so many different wonderful people. You know, of course, there are some people that I've already met, Kathleen and Marlene, and of course, Sue, who I've met before. Um, and then Yvonne and Jessica, Jessica um, Schoolhouse Stitcher, they were there as well, and so I was, yeah, I'm comfortable with talking with people that I've met before, and they are very, you know, I think Jessica and I probably have very similar personalities, um, meaning we're shy, <laughs> but um, it was nice to visit with all of them, and then I get to meet some of the people I watch on Floss Tube all the time, and it was great. Um, it was wonderful meeting Michelle Rudy. She gave me a huge hug. It made me feel so welcome. And I'm sorry, Michelle, if I didn't seem very talkative. It was just a really bad um, things going on with my family. And I'm shy. And I was just overwhelmed. And she's one of my absolute favorite people on Floss Tube. And so it was just like meeting one of your, you know, I was a big fan girl. But um, she's, she did a phenomenal job. And I can't believe she does this by herself, essentially. But... Great job, Michelle, and you're just amazing and beautiful and wonderful. I can't say enough about Michelle. Um, I got to meet Carol, Saltbox Stitcher, and her sister, Deb. They're so sweet, and Carol makes me laugh. She has the best attitude. She just is positive and hilarious. 
Um, I got to spend some time with Suzette from Primitive Stitcher, who I love. She's one of my heroes, too. I want to be as creative and, um, you know, just talented as she is. And I got to spend a good time talking to her about, you know, some life, you know, similar life issues that we have, talking about our kids and such. Um, I got to meet two of the, the, okay, the cutest thing in Minnesota that weekend had to be Steph and Joe, the best friends. They were so funny. And if I have the, if I can, I'll insert a picture that I took of the two of them with their shirt. They're, they were so sweet. They're very hilarious. Um, so it was nice to meet them. And of course, Pam is a very supportive mother and pretty cool mom that she can hang out with that, the, the two of them. Um, I got to meet Purple Stitcher, Jennifer. There were lots of Jennifers. One point, Michelle said, "If you're not, if your name is Michelle, Jennifer, and I can't remember what the other one is, please stand up." And you know, about a third of us stood up. So, Jennifer, Purple Stitcher, she was there, and she's super nice. It was nice to meet her. Um, Julie, Gulf Coast Stitcher, and her friend Robbie. Robbie's amazing. Julie, you're right. She's amazing. Um, Julie's super sweet too. Julie, she was my foodimentary go-to. Every you know, I do my foodimentary and I was worried that I couldn't get some of the things and Julie always had an answer for me. I One night it was seafood um, bisque and she's like, okay, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go get that um, soup over there, which is the same thing as a bisque and go get that piece of fish, put it on there and there you go. I'm like, Thank you, Julie. So she was great. Um, she's really sweet too. Uh, Kindred Stitcher Lisa. I love her. And she can dance. She's amazing. And um, Textilist, was, I have got to spend a little bit of time with her. Jennifer from Felicity Stitches is one of my new favorites. I've watched her videos. I think she's hilarious on her videos. In real life, she's even better. She needs to go on the road. She was telling the story of how she was you know, doing her hair that night and just her telling us the story of that was hilarious, had me laughing to the point I was almost crying. I could spend an entire retreat with Jennifer from Felicity Stitches, which I practically did. She sat behind me. She's so sweet. Holly and Anita were there. Holly's laugh kept me probably from crying the whole retreat, actually, because she was so positive. Um, there were Lots and lots and lots of people that came up and talked to me and that were super sweet. Kay, um, who gave us all a small kit. And if you've watched other people's videos, you've seen that with the cookie cutter and the leaf and everything. Just super um, generous. Uh, Darlene Bumgardner, she was hilarious. And she gave me these two 2018 charms so I can hang them on some of my ornaments I'm going to make. So thank you, Darlene. Um, I'm trying to think. There were so many people there. I'm going to miss some of them. There was a lady named Amy who was sitting on the other corner from me. And when you would come in, you would pass her workspace. And she is so talented. If she is not doing a video, she should because we would all be watching her. Um, she was doing needlepoint and she was doing a Halloween piece and I want to do needlepoint now. It was gorgeous. And I, I know she was sick of me coming over there and like, can I just look at what you're doing? Can I just look? It was just beautiful. So Amy, amazing work. Um, McKenna was there. McKenna is serious. McKenna is hilarious. I really enjoyed meeting her and I'm very shy. So of course, so I didn't talk very much, but she, um, super funny. And then, um, Bendy Stitchy was there, so I spent a little bit of time with her. Um, but, Gen uh, Ginger Gerald Stitcher, he, I didn't get, to, I didn't go and look at the, um, Henry VIII. I didn't get over there, but, um, I wish I would have. That's an amazing thing. I'm a big Tudor England history buff. I mentioned that on my last video. Um, Allison Weir is one of my favorite authors, historical authors, but now she's writing novels. And somebody made a comment. Who was it? I wrote it down because I was going to say, Rara Realm. 
she mentioned a series that she that Allison Weir is publishing as novels, and I've got that series on automatic. So anytime a new one comes out, Amazon automatically sends it to me. So yeah, I love that series. Um, so there's just all kinds of uh, people that I got to interact with, talented people. Um, just it was a really good weekend. And if I failed to mention your name, please forgive me. It's just, it was a little bit overwhelming. Um, and I just really enjoyed the whole weekend and spending time with and listening to people talk and tell their stories. Um, a couple of, I guess I'll show you some of the haul that I had from there. Not purchases. That Stitchville stuff will come later. But kind of give you an idea of some of the gifts that I have. I have a mess here too, so... So we did a door prize. So Michelle has this roll of raffle tickets and apparently she's had this for years. It must have been like started out this big. So it's about this big and she gave everybody a ticket for each of the events we were doing. So when we did the door prizes, she would call numbers and whenever your number was called, you'd go across the hall and you'd pick an item. So I, I, don't, I want her to know that I was just laughing the whole time because it was hilarious. Because she was worried that people were, I guess, just didn't want anybody to be upset. And she's calling numbers because everybody's name was going to be, or number was going to be called. It's just, when was your number going to come up? And I'm, our family's unlucky. So I didn't expect mine to be called until the exact very end, which it wasn't. I had a little bit of luck. But I just kept laughing and, and she's like, stop looking at me like that. And I'm like, it's, I'm just hilarious. Because like my number would be 801. She would call 803. 799, 800, 804. So it was all, you know, never got to my number until the end. But there were amazing door prizes. So it didn't matter if you were the last person, you were going to get something amazing. And I got these horn books for finishing, which I want, have wanted these forever. And when I went in there and saw them, I'm like, absolutely cool. So that was really great. Um, we also were able to, she had a special gift for everyone. It was either one of the LaHaye's boxes or one of the 1803 Ohio um, baskets. And I chose the LaHaye box because when I walked in and saw this color, I'm like, oh, that's mine. And so I was very excited about that. And then to find out this Susie Reno had picked this one and put it back, and then so I got it. So that makes it even more special because it was Sue's almost. So I love, love this. Um, for the first night, Friday night, we did the um, finish small. Um, I don't have a picture of what I did. I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, I did a Lottie Da Pumpkins 3. And I had stitched it a while back, and I finished it on a wooden tray that I'd picked up at a an estate sale, and it fit perfectly. Trimmed it out with some of the pom-pom trim. I thought it was really cute. Didn't even really want to give it away. I'm like, mm. I told my husband, I'm like, I think I can finish a pin cushion really quickly and keep this for myself. He said, no, I'll, I'll do it. And the person that got it was really happy, I think. She said she was very happy with it, so that's good. Um, I received this tin from Trisha, I believe is the name. Like me, she didn't have a card in hers, but T, B. And I love this. I collect acorns. Everywhere I go, I get acorns. But I didn't get any in Minnesota, which was really disappointing. I have to go back. I have some, I've got some in Boston. But I have, and I try to write, I'm trying to remember to write the name of the place that I picked up the acorn. But I have a, a little wooden bowl in my guest bathroom that's full of acorns that I've picked up. It also included, sorry, a little needle minder and a pair of scissors. So I love that. That is so cute. And then the second night we did the Stitchy Gift Exchange. I put together a complete kit of Brenda Gervais um, Field Mouse Hollow. And again, I think the person who received that enjoyed it. At least they seemed to enjoy it. I received the gift from Vicki Knutson. Knutson. It was really great. It was a Glendon Place Witch um, 
chart and she included the specialty threads and the buttons. I loved it. And my sister, I think it was my sister, either my sister or my friend borrowed it. Um, so it's being loved. So I wish I had it to show you, but that's okay. So that was very sweet and it's going to be used over and over again, apparently. So, um, the last thing we did was a, the, the raffle. And again, you had a ticket and they put, you know, you bought tickets and you put the tickets into the different cups. You're supposed to split your tickets, keep one, put the rest, you know, in the different cups. You've probably seen already the amazing hooked rug that Kathleen donated. I loved it. I was obsessed with it. I wanted that rug so badly. I'm okay that Jennifer Purple Stitcher was the one. Did you hear me almost say I stole it? She won it. It was so beautiful. And it was just amazing. And I put almost all of my tickets in there. But that's okay. I'm all right with that. Um, I cried a little bit. No, I didn't. I didn't. It was just it was just an, an amazing rug. Kathleen is, is just talented. But I did win something. And I won one of the 1801, 1803... Ohio basket the larger size of the gift one so I was super excited about that and I've already put some things in there love love this so so I got a basket as well I can't wait till the next retreat um it was just fun I love retreats so um one person that I got to spend some time with that I really I spent time with lots of people but one lady that I got to meet and talk to quite a bit was Penny. She's from Maine. I think that's right. And she's starting her own um, shop for people in Maine particularly because apparently they don't have a shop. But I got to just talk with her about some of the things that I have found and learned as a shop owner. Um, some of the things that I consider and we spent time talking about cookbooks because apparently she loves to read cookbooks as well. So it was just really sweet to, to make friends with um, someone that lives in a completely different part of the country but has such similar interests and such similar uh, kind of hobbies. So, hey Penny, it was really nice meeting you. Um, another person that was really fun to just see how she interacted with everybody because she was just super sweet was Donna. Um, she uh, helped out by doing the raffle tickets during the one of the gift exchanges and she she was just she sat really close to us um, but I just had a great time and I think I've said that quite a bit so Minnesota retreat score so um, other life updates is chicken update so our chickens are doing great we have lost two so while I was at the Minnesota retreat one of our chickens did not get into the pen like she was supposed to, and so she's gone. The next day when I got home, I went out and there were, all of them were there, and I let them out, and that afternoon when I went back, another one was missing. Don't know what happened, so we're down to 14 instead of 16 chickens. Which is sad. It's very upsetting. But those girls and the rooster, they're all doing fine now. And we actually have two that are laying eggs regularly. So um, on October 27th, I found the first egg in the one of the nesting boxes. So I was so excited. I was telling my husband, I'm like, I bet they've been laying eggs longer. We should kind of walk around the yard and see if we can find any. Because we let our chickens roam during the day. And um, sure enough, we're standing there talking about it. My husband looks down by the driveway where we were standing, and he's like, like that nest right there that's full of eggs. And yeah, there were 15 eggs in that nest. So I'm like, okay, well, two weeks ago, they started laying eggs. Um, but they're nice size, medium to large eggs, and they're doing great. So hopefully we'll get a few more eggs before they start. You know, it slows down when the days get shorter. I guess I'll finally get to stitching now that I'm 30 minutes in, but I had to talk about the retreat. So that, that's stitchy too. Um, I have had some finishes. So the first one is a, one that I've shown you before, but I've, I actually framed it. 
and that is Stacy Nash. This is Grace Bridges. I love this piece, and I love this frame. I think it's perfect for it. I do have one request, though. This this house is stitched in Warbler's Wings, or Wing. It's a General Arts um, uh, limited edition thread. And someone had messaged me about this and said that they would love to stitch that. And I have some of the thread left over, and I was supposed to mail it to her, but I lost that message, so I don't have, I don't know who to mail it to. So if that is you, please message me again so I can get you that thread. I have it. I've had, had it set aside, but I just have forgotten about it. Or I can't find the message. Another finish that I've had since our last, my last video is October 31st by Brenda Gervais. I love this. I'm so happy to finish it, though, because that's a lot of that grass. I'm going to finish this in the Priscilla and Chelsea style because I found this bat at At Home. That's the name of the shop, At Home. And it used to be Garden Ridge. And I'm going to do the little thing with the drill the holes, the little wire, and then do a fancy flat fold with this and hang it underneath. And I think that'll be cute. So, so that's another FO. Um, primitive Needle. Halloween. So this is stitched on XJU Design or XJU Design um, Jack-O-Lantern 40 count. I think this is so pretty. I stitched on this at the retreat. And I got maybe four of these little flower looking things done. And then on the way back to Mississippi on the plane, I finished all of the border essentially. But it is really pretty. And I'm going to frame that piece. I love that. Another finish, which is one that I have had this almost completed. All I had to do was the French knots on those little sheep and this little leaf that goes on the inside. So I just said, you know what, Jen, you need to get this done. So I finished that. I just need to FFO it. And then I also finished Apple Stitches by Jeanette Douglas. I love this series. I've shown some of my other stitches from Jeanette in other videos, but what I love about it is it does have specialty stitches. The borders are all different specialty stitches, but she gives such good instructions. I mean, it's like step one, do the outer border. Step two tells you how to do another border, but just it's easy to follow. And the other thing I love about this is because you stitch it on 32 count when it's finished, it fits into an 8x10 frame perfectly. So this is a frame that I picked up at a thrift store, and I'm just going to frame it in that. And this is going to be a gift for my mother because she collects apple things. Where am I going to put this? Over there. Okay, I think that is all of my finishes. Let me find my notebook. I have a mess here. It's really so nice. I mean, there's a mess back there too, but it's not my mess. That's my son's mess. Let me see. I think Apple Stitches was my last finish. Oh no, I have one other finish. I don't know where it is though. Hmm. Oh, it's right here. My last finish is Mystic Sampler by Primitive Needle. And this is deceptively, you would think it would be really fast stitch. It's not. There's a lot of letters, a lot of little tiny pieces there. But it's done. So check that one off the list. And I'm going to frame that. I have, I'll show you. I have Halloween Sampler framed in this really ornate frame. And I, I want to find something very similar to that. And I just have it hanging over here on my Halloween wall, which you can see that on some of my earlier videos. I actually set my computer up on this and 
taped this way and you can see all my Halloween finishes. Um, so those are my finishes. My whips, I've kind of been focusing. I'm getting, kind of getting a little nervous about projects. And so I've been focusing on things and trying to get them finished and not switch up so much. So this month, I focused on Apple stitches and Mystic stitches. And right now, if I can find where I've put it, I'm also stitching on another Brenda Gervais. This is Three Tulips. And this is Heritage from Silk Weaver, 40 count. That bunny took me like forever to stitch. But I'm outlining, you can see the urn underneath. I've outlined most of that and I'm going to just stitch that, fill that in. I have a few letters down here and then this comes down. There's another tulip or something over here. So maybe another week and I'll have this one done. And when I frame this, these letters will stand out a little better, a little more contrast. So that's my main whip. Um, another one that I worked on this weekend, I love this piece. I can remember when I ordered this in for my shop, um, I was so excited because I had seen it, and I, I'm a Santa collector, but when I pulled it out, I was like, oh my gosh, that is the cutest idea. So Yuletide Shanty. And what I love about this that you can't see on here is the whale. Look at that. So that's the, the side of the drum. I love this one. And this is one of those that I don't think gets a lot of um, publicity, I guess. Because, I mean, that's cute, but that's even cuter. So I can't wait to finish that. I, this one may end up jumping to the top of the list of finishes or focus on a finish. Let's see. I think that's it. Plans. So what I'm doing, I like all, uh, I have no problem with all my whips. You know, I am okay with having many, many things started. And Carol, um, Saltbox Stitcher and I were talking about, it. she goes, it's okay. What's the difference in having you know, a piece of fabric and all the threads and a piece of fabric and all the threads and a few stitches in it. I'm like, exactly. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. But I'm getting bored with these and I want to stitch some new stuff. And, you know, I make up rules for myself and I have to follow the rules because I make them up. And I haven't been starting things and I want to start some things. So I'm like, okay, self, see how many things you can get finished by the end of the year. Just really focus, do what you can, like Priscilla says, stitch like it's your job, and just, you know, get some of these things that are hanging in your whip boxes and finish them. So there are several of them that are small that, if, you know, if I just focus on them, I could finish them up, and that would clear out some. I mean, I have some that are huge, and it's going to probably the rest of my life working on them, but not all of them. So I'm going to focus on finishes. But I'm also going to stitch on some of these things doing my, you know, I love the Tiny Decisions app that everybody's talking about. So I did a wheel that has the Stitch Mania starts. So this month what I've been doing is spinning the wheel and I stitch on one of those Mania starts each day. And the other thing I'm doing is I have the list of what I started back in 2016 when I did 100 new starts. And on the day, which it was... August through December is when I was doing that. On the day that I started it, if I still have that project in my whip basket, I'm stitching on that. So I may stitch up to on three different projects a day, which is okay. I spend about, you know, 30 minutes to an hour on each. One floss tube video essentially on each one. Um, and so I'm getting some things finished. But in 2019, my plan is to start a bunch of stuff, but not start each day, start something and work on it till I finish. Um, and so I'm going to, it's going to be a Brenda Gervais year because I have a lot of her charts and I love her aesthetic. Candy cane wishes, plum pudding, basket of winter time. Look at Santa Claus with that candy cane. And that's a baby deer behind him because it has spots on it. Winter in Baltimore. 
something like that. And then all bundled up. So that's one, two, three, four, five things I need to do. So I would love, love, love to start and finish some of her projects this in 2019. So that's my plans for 2019. Um, we'll see how far that goes. Okay, sorry about that. I was getting message after message. Um, I needed to deal with that. Nothing serious. It was a cross-stitch emergency. So it's all good. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, purchases. So I've, I've had quite a few purchases. Um, I will show you some of them from Stitchville. I was pretty good at Stitchville. I mean, I wasn't that great at Stitchville. I, I mean, I was great at Stitchville. I found a lot of stuff. But I didn't spend as much money as I could have. So here are some of the things that I got at Stitchville. I got um, Basin. What is this? Buttermilk Basin. This is one of her farm girl. I just love the barn girl, excuse me, the tractors. This is a wool applique, which I love to do. I got a punch needle with thy needle and thread. I got the new witch from Witchy Mouse from Just Nan. Because I love these little ladies. Um, in the reduce for quick sale, do y'all say that? That's what my mom and I always talk about when something's reduced. We call it reduce for quick sale. And the reduce for quick sell, I got several of these Nora Corbett. I want to do this whole series. I'm obsessed with 12 Days of Christmas. I have several projects in the works, and I want to do these. So I'm missing the first two. I got three French hens, four turtle doves. I'm missing the fifth one. Um, What is this? Six geese laying. Seven swans of swimming. Eight maids of milking. I'm missing nine, so I'm missing four of them. Ten lords of leaping. Eleven pipers piping. And twelve drummers drumming. Every time I say twelve drummers drumming, it makes me think of that episode on The Office when um, the Christmas one where they had the, the secret Santa And Andy set it up for his the girl that he liked. He had the drummers at the end. I just think of that. Anyway, so I got that out of the reduced um, for quick sale. And then I got some other stuff, which I can't seem to find right now because I have a mess here. Um, but, and I got a, um, a corner gauge. So I love these. I've got one of these at the Stitcher's, what is it? Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock as well. I think they're kind of cute. Different types of things to collect. Oh, here they are. Okay. And then I got some of these cards from Prairie Schooler Cards. I love this one. And that one. And these may be in those sets, but that's okay. I got them anyway. Um, I also, at the retreat, I picked up some of Suzette's little book she makes. This is the one that's the Project Floss Keeper. I love this. She is so creative. I love these things. I'm a little bit obsessed with this. So I love that. And then I got some of the stitching journals. Isn't this amazing? Suzette, you're amazing. So it, you keep a record of this. So I got two of these. One's for 2019 and one's for 2020. I'm planning ahead. Or they may, you know, hey, I might need two for 2019. Who knows? So this is one, and then this is the other. Isn't that cute? This, I think this was the thing that I was most excited about were these stitching journals. I just thought it was such a smart idea. Suzette, you're such a smart lady. I also bought a project bag from Lisa because it had chickens on it. Love that. Oh, and here's the other things I got at Stitchville. I got, thank you, Sarah Tobias. Teresa found that, actually. Thank you, Teresa. 
and this was in the reduced style or the reduced boxes because those are fancy rabbits in the forest by Lottie Da. And then there's one more thing that I got. I have a funny story about this. This was in, Teresa and I both picked this up. When I got home, I couldn't find it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I left it. When I stuffed it in, I flattened it so it would go in my suitcase. And when I put it in, I put it close to the wall. Well, I put it between the fabric of the liner and the um, outer fabric of the suitcase. So I almost lost that for good. So those are some of my Stitchville purchases. Another purchase, I've been buying fabric to do project bags. Because I keep saying I'm going to list some in my shop, and I am. I bought these, but it's kind of late in the game for Halloween. But I think that's beautiful. Maybe not beautiful, but it's interesting. There you go. It's interesting. And I bought this fabric. This is going to be the lining. Isn't that beautiful? I'm really into bird watching again. Um, I've been going... There's three ways that I can go home from my work three different routes and there's one that I go where I can see American kestrels the thing is is they're in a person's backyard and so I kind of pull around to the back of their house on the road but pull around and then I get my binoculars out and I'm watching and I'm like they're probably thinking that I'm stalking them so my sister knows them so I'm like Bridget can you call your friend and tell them that the person in the white f-150 is not you know casing their house it's just they have interesting birds in their backyard. And then I got this too. Little chickens. So cute. So I'm going to make project bags. And then if I have extras, I'll put those in my shop. Um, Fabric. Other fabric. So on our way to the airport, Teresa and I stopped at the Fabric Dock, which is my favorite fabric shop. And I can't believe Teresa's never heard me talk about this place. She said she'd never heard of it or she'd never stopped there. She's seen it. But I thought she'd been there with me. I go there often. But when we were driving down, I'm like, hey, I want to stop at the fabric store. And she's like, okay. And then she's like, I've never been there. I was shocked because I've been going for four years at least because my niece is four. Maybe it's only been three years, but one of the things that I buy there, and I'll just show you this really quickly, is there's these panels. This is a series that's released by a designer whose name I forget every time. It is Stacy. I think that's just Sue. Who? H-S-U. But it's through Moda. And it's this series of little dolls that you can make little dresses for. They're really easy to make for me. They're easy. But this is like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Um, and I've made multiple sets. Actually, at one point, I'd made so many, they were all in a bag, and I just gave her the bag, and she was just like, she was a three-year-old, just overwhelmed with all the toys she was getting. Um, and so I've got that set and a cowboy set that I've got to do for her soon. Um, but I love her shop. Her shop is amazing. Um, it's a mother-daughter set. Mother-daughter set. A mother-daughter um, group that opened the shop. They had an Etsy store and they made pro uh, different products for people and then they just started selling their fabrics. Their displays are amazing. It's a great shop. If you're ever in South Mississippi on Highway 49 going to or from the coast, Fabric Dock. It's going to be on the west side of 49, you know, about halfway between Hattiesburg and Gulfport. It's a little tiny shop, but it's amazing. Um, Nancy, the mother, is super sweet. I love her. She is just very kind. Uh, Teresa and I, when we were there, I signed up to go to a quilt class. And Teresa's like, I'll do that too. But the quilt class was the Alberta quilt. And the qu class was more about using this ruler, which is the Stripology squared ruler. They're kind of pricey, but where all of those um, vertical lines are, there's grooves that you cut. So you can square up your um, your square and cut it, and it makes doing these quilts much faster. We went there today. Um, actually, I went there yesterday and picked out my fabric. I'm using this 
layer cake. So I'll show you some of the fabrics. Isn't that pretty? And a white. So you need two layer cakes. And you sew them together, cut them, and you're making squares with a little arrow on it. So here's some of the ones I did today. Same one. So I did four of those. And here's another. So I'm only working on the blues. And then you put them together to make this quilt. So that's what we did today. Super fun. Then we went and ate at McAllister's and then we got a, a, a cupcake because today's vanilla cupcake day. And I, hopefully I'll get back to sewing on those. And another thing I picked up was the pattern to do this little wallet. Isn't that cute? I can't wait to do that. You could do all kinds of things with that. So those were my purchases. I think that will do it on purchases. Y'all are like, yes, Jennifer, that is enough. One more. I got to show you this. The winner issue of Primitive Quilts and Projects is out. Lots of good projects in here. I can't wait to get to work on some of these. Just look at that. Beautiful stuff. I love this magazine. And if you've watched some of my previous um, videos, I've talked about the fact that I'm doing their mystery quilt. I ordered the set. And I'm working on the last in that series. Which, here's the final product. So, oh, so cute. Okay. All right, so that's my purchases. Store update. I'm going to do a quick store update, um, and then I'm going to talk about giveaways. So let me put this over here. So a couple sacrifices. Um, Pentatonic by Ink Circles. I love this. That is so pretty. Another thing that I'm adding that's not new. I didn't. Can't believe I don't have this. Where hearts rest. And then I finally got the latest from Plum Street, Buzz Off, Eat Crow. I can't figure out which hand I'm looking at. And Crone on a Hill. That's cute. Winter House Trio is now in stock. And Winter Tide Friends. These are some old ones, but I didn't know I didn't have these. And this is perfect time of year to do these stockings. At Stitchville, I saw this pattern on the wall, and I was like, I need that. And then I forgot to go back and get it. And then I was watching Julie's video, and she's like, and I saw this, and I got it. Uber turkey. This was adorable stitched up at Stitchville. They used a different fabric, but I love that. So I've got this in my shop as well. So I'm copying you, Julie. Great minds. Um... I finally have this one in stock. I've been have it in my cart to order from Witch Elk forever and finally push the button. Um, sometimes my brain, but some people have talked to have messaged me. This is the one that um, Kathleen, Marlene, Nicole, and I all just fell in love with because at uh, Shepherd's Needle they stitched it in different colors on different color fabric, kind of monochromatic for the different seasons. Love that. I thought this was interesting. I love Threadwork Primitive. This is merry and bright, and the trees are satin stitched. I think that's so pretty. So that will be in my shop. And I have this one in my shop. Ooh. So this has been kind of a hot topic lately. And I didn't think I would get it when I ordered it, but I got them. So I've got some of these. And one other thing that I've added to my shop, I have bowing needles. But I just, I like Mary Arden. So I, I'm adding the Mary Arden, both the petites and regular. So if you like Mary Arden, I'll have those in my shop as well. And then the latest, just the pin minis from Just Another Button Company have come out. Aren't those cute? That giraffe's adorable. So this will all be posted in my shop if you're interested. One other shop update. I'm running a special. I'm doing free shipping in the U.S. for orders over $25. So 
Um, I still have a whole bunch of things on clearance. Um, I'm, I cleaned my shop. My shop is a walk-in closet. We built, when we built the house, we built a, a suite on the back of our house for my parents and they didn't move in with us. So I said, fine, I'll turn that back closet into a shop. So that's where all my stuff is stored. So I'm limited in how much I can um, space you know, by space. So I'm trying to get some things out of the shop that have been there for a while. So you'll see those are marked down pretty low. Um, but $25 and you get free shipping. So I'm doing that through the end of the year. Um, I'm also, some of those charts that um, just are, I have lots of them. Um, I'm I've marked them down really, really low. Put it that way. So check out, just do reduced or clearance. Search, search for those things and you'll see those in my shop. Um, if there's anything you need, just send me a message as well. Um, last thing, that is the giveaway. So I know people are like, it's been a while since you said you were doing, going to do that giveaway. Well, I had 143 people comment on my last video. And then I did drawings for the for two different um, pieces. One was for the Teresa Winsler. And this was, I found this at um, the quilt show. And it comes with the pattern. It comes with the Lugana. Okay, there's no thread. But it, the thread list is in DMC. And, you know, this pattern is a big one. That's just, just a little going to be beautiful. But um, the winner of this one is Crafty Denny, D-E-N-I. And I've made a, I'm, I made a comment on yours. So if you can contact me, I'll get this in the mail to you. And the other giveaway was the Primitive Quilts from Fall 2018 because I bought two of these. And Jilly Pepper, who comments and has always been one of my regular commenters she she won this so congratulations so if you can let me know i will get this in the mail to you as well this time my giveaway is for another thing that i bought and i already had a copy of and then another um kind of one of my favorite kind of projects so the first one is a uh, blackbird design honeybee hill i have two copies of this so i'm going to give away one I think this one's out of print. I can't get it from my distributors anymore. And that bee is one of the best cross-stitch bees I've seen. I love that. So if you're interested, um, make a comment below. And in your comment, say you love the bees. Please do not say anything about a giveaway. I'll delete your message. You have to be 18. I can't tell if you're a subscriber or not, so that's okay. I don't know how to check that, and I'm okay with not knowing how to do that. Okay? So that's one of the giveaways. The other giveaway has to do with another one of my obsessions. I love wool applique. I wish I could do more of it. Um, but a few years back, Just Another Button Company did a whole bunch of pin cushions with wool and wool applique types of projects and I wanted to do them all and I just about did them all. I think I did at least 75% of them and this is one of them. It's a little tart and you cut out the little leaves and you make the little pie crust and then there's berries and peaches and then you have the pin set and I love this. Mine, this was one of the first ones I did so I overstuffed it a little bit. But it's just super cute. And one of the things that I had in my shop that I got the stock that I bought from Teresa when I started this was one of the kits. And these kits are not cheap. It's kind of had a blowout and squish, but all the materials in there, including the pin set. So that's going to be another giveaway. So if you like if you would like to be entered in the drawing for this, just mention your favorite berry. It can be a, you know, it's berry delicious, so we'll do berries, strawberries, snozberries, avocado's a berry. So what's your favorite berry? Okay, so those are the two items that I'm doing the giveaway for this week. So, well, that was a longer video than I had expected. I think this is going to be a over an hour, but I had a lot to talk about with my two trips. Um, 
I appreciate all of the comments. I appreciate all of the information. Um, I appreciate all of your comments, and I do read them all, and I try to respond or at least give a thumbs up. Is there anything else? I think that's it. So thank you for watching. Thank you for um, always coming back. For those of you that return, thank you for the new people that have stuck through this. Um, and it's just the Floss Tooth community is an amazing group of people. We're very fortunate to be um, able to communicate with people that, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, we would not have been able to build a community that we have. So I'm very thankful for that. And since it is the um, kind of time of the year for being thankful, I do want to list three things that I'm thankful for. I am very thankful for my family. I have a wonderful husband and two wonderful sons, and I have great parents and siblings, so I'm very thankful for my family, though sometimes I don't act like I am. Um, I am very thankful for my cross-stitch friends um, and crafting friends. Um, my friend Lisha is an amazing woman. She is extremely supportive. She is very honest, and she is the type of person that we all need in our life. She is just, she is a good counselor, put it that way. And I appreciate her and her um, just drive to do whatever. She is a go-getter. Um, I'm going to link her Etsy shop below. She does a lot of cra uh, crazy crafts. She does. She does all of these amazing um, animals and scissor fobs and bracelets and all kinds of stuff. And I just really appreciate and I'm very thankful to have her in my life. She's a great person. Thank you. And I'm thankful for my other crafty friends as well. I am very thankful that I have had a chance to build a great relationship with Kathleen, Marlene, and Nicole. Those three ladies, I know I've said it a lot, but I don't, I, I can't say it enough. Those three came into my life when I needed them most, and I really appreciate how much you share with me and how supportive you are. Um, it makes my day when I get a message from you, and I've been getting messages from you during this recording of this video, so I can't wait to see what Kathleen has finished. So, um, I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope the end of the semester for all of these, uh, all of us involved in college and universities goes well. It's coming to an end really fast. I'm very excited. I've got four more class meetings and then final exams. Woohoo! So um, I hope to see you very soon and have a good November. Thanks.